Mastiff KC Interim Breed Standard as amended 1st of November 2004. The strong well built dog is found in the foothills of the Himalayas and the borders of Tibet. He is primarily a guard dog used to protect the flocks from preying wildlife and the home from intruders. A powerful dog without the massive frame of the Mastiff he is well coated with a bushy tail. Usually black or black and tan, he can also be found in gold and shades of grey. In his native environment he is very distrustful of strangers and can be quite ferocious. However, dogs bred in Europe and America do not generally display these tendencies. General appearance. Large, powerfully built, slightly longer than high, well boned and muscled, never light but always agile. Impressive head provides a noble, dignified look, enhanced by a mane which is more pronounced in males and balanced by a well feathered tail carried back over the back. Characteristics a loyal companion and guardian, slow to mature. Temperament independently minded, aloof and protective, calm and patient, may be wary of strangers. Head and skull broad, heavy and strong, skull large with strongly defined occiput and marked stop. Length from nose to stop equal or slightly less than length from stop to occiput. Muzzle fairly broad well filled, blunt and square viewed from all sides. Broad black nose, well open nostrils, lips well developed with moderate flues. In maturity some wrinkling on head extending from above eyes to corner of mouth. Eyes very expressive, medium size, dark brown. Set well apart, oval and slightly slanting. Dark, close fitting eye rims. Ears, medium sized, triangular, pendant, not set too low, hanging close to head. When alert, carried forward. Ear leathers covered with soft, short hair. Mouth. Jaws strong with perfect, regular and complete scissor bite, i.e. upper teeth closely overlapping lower teeth and set square to the jaws. Level bite acceptable, full dentition desirable. Neck strong, well muscled, slightly arched, not too much dewlap. Forequarters muscular, well laid shoulders strongly boned, straight legs with strong slightly sloping pasterns. Body from point of shoulder to point of buttock slightly longer than height at withers as 10 to 9 ratio. Strong and straight back broad muscular loins with very slightly sloping croup. Chest rather deep of moderate breadth. breadth. Rib cage oval, ribs well sprung but not barrelled, carried well back. Brisket reaching to or just below elbows. Hindquarters powerful, muscular with moderate angulation and strong low set hocks. Hind legs seen from behind parallel. Single or double dew claws may be present. Feet Fairly large, strong, with thick pads, rounded and compact, having good feathering between toes. Tail, medium to long, set on high, loosely curled over back to one side, well feathered. Gait and movement, powerful and free with purpose and agility, measured and deliberate when walking. At speed will tend to single track. Coat. Males carry noticeably more than females. Quality of greater importance than quantity. 
densely coated, fairly long, thick with heavy woolly undercoat in cold weather which becomes rather sparse in warmer months. Hair fine, hard and straight, never silky, curly or wavy. Hair on face short. Neck and shoulders heavily coated, giving mane like appearance. Tail heavily feathered, hind legs well feathered on upper rear parts. Colour rich black with or without tan, slate grey with or without tan, rich golden. The rich tan markings appear above eyes, on muzzle, on chest, the lower part of legs and underside of tail. Spectacle, spectacle markings around eyes acceptable. White star on breast permissible. Minimal white markings on feet tolerated. Cream white, chocolate liver, party colour, brindle or flecked are undesirable. Size. A minimum height of 66 centimetres, 26 inches in dogs, and 61 centimetres, 24 inches in bitches is desirable, but on no account should type be sacrificed to size alone. Faults. Any departure from the foregoing point should be considered a fault, and the serious seriousness with which the fault should be regarded should be in exact proportion to its degree and its effect upon the health and welfare of the dog. Note, male animals should have two apparently normal testicles fully descended into the scrotum.